me in a fanciful dream that our cafeteria's monthly German seafood festival could in fact be a thing of beauty. What are you talking about? They just call it a German seafood festival so they can get rid of all their leftover fish sticks and sauerkraut. While it does seem that all fish sticks and sauerkraut would never go together, if you just use your imagination, they become the mountaintop birthplace of Davy Crockett, a true American hero. Hey, that's pretty cool. I'm gonna make mine into Pagan Stadium. I'll recombine mine into a giant strand of DNA. Hey, guys, now my lunch walks. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Gus. What a day to bring lunch from home. You're missing out on all the fun. Mm, that's okay, TJ. I brought one of my dad's military field rations. Chip beef on crackers. My favorite. Need salt. Out of my way, flat top. Y yes, sir. I ain't chewing no sauerkraut. Who's got something better? Hi. All right, girly, give me your lunchbox. Hey, that's mine. Aha! Just how I suspected, corn chip girl. You're always good for a bag of the salty stuff. <laughs> what are you looking at? <laughs> You can't do that to a girl! <laughs> huh? well, what did I do? My gosh, you... Assaulted another student on school grounds, that's what! Griswold, Fillmore, LeMays, to the principal's office, on the double! I'm sorry, corn chip girl. I didn't mean to get you into trouble. It's not your fault. It was very brave of you to stand up for me. I just wish I hadn't spilled my lunch. It was chip beef on crackers. Chip beef on crackers? That's my favorite! Gus, uh, I received a phone call from Principal Pickley. He explained to me that you skirmished with another boy. You know that disorderly conduct is strictly against Griswold policy. Um, excuse me, sir. It's true. Gus did knock Fillmore down. But he only did it because Fillmore knocked me down first. <laughs> Is that really what happened, Private? Yes, sir. I see. Now, Gus, violence should never be one's first choice in solving conflicts. That said, I'll concede that defending a girl is a noble thing to do, especially if the girl is as cute as... Griswold! You, of all people, unhand my daughter! Well, well, if it isn't Luke LeMay's... That's Lieutenant LeMay's to you, mister. I should have known your boy was behind this. Dad! I'm sure my little sailor could have handled herself just fine without your son stepping up hostilities. May I hear it? My son was just coming to your daughter's rescue! Soldier, this girl's trouble. From here on out, you are not to fraternize with her at school. Understood? Um, well... You're saying my girl's trouble? Teresa, that tears it. As long as you're a student at this school, you'll have nothing to do with this roughhousing Griswold boy. Daddy, That's I... That's an order. Now, Mark, shoot two, Private. Pop two! So it turns out that my dad and Corn Chip Girl's dad both went to the same military high school. And they competed against each other in everything. When my dad went to the Army Academy and Lieutenant LeMay has went to the Naval Academy, they played football against each other. They had war games against each other. They even argued over invasion plans during Operation Steely Resolve in the Azores Islands. Two guys who can't stand each other. And here they are with kids at the same school. An unfortunate coincidence. Maybe it is best that you stay away from Corn Chip Girl, Gus. I'd hate to see someone get grounded. I guess you're right, Teej. Okay, that's settled. No more talking to corn chip. Now, how's about we all go ride our bikes off Dead Man's Dirt Pile? Oh, yeah! The Dirt Pile of Doom! Yeah! Gus, you coming? I think I'll pass, guys. I need another shake to clear my head. Gotcha, buddy. Join us when you're ready. Huh? What's that, Mr. Kelso? It's from the lady. I just wanted to thank you, you know, for standing up for me. Corn chip, girl! I, I can't be here. Not with you! I, I mean, my dad said... Our dad said we couldn't hang out together at school. But we're not at school now, so that makes it okay, right? I guess that's true. Thanks for the frap. Hey, what you got there? Land and sea. Land and sea? That's my favorite game of quick thinking, strategy, and courage. You've got one too? Hey, you want to play one-on-one? -on -one? Would I ever? Corn chip, girl, let's go to war. Okay. Blue 11. Miss. Green 3. Hit! My missile launcher is kablammed! You win! You sure know your way around the flanking maneuver. You should talk. One more hit on my bomber squadron and you would have blown it up, but good. Ah, uh, it was nothing. Gee, we both like land and sea. We both love chip beef and crackers. It seems like we were made to be friends. Yeah, except for our dads. You know, I've got a feeling they'd be mad if they found us together, even if it was here at Kelso's. Well, then, how about if we just make sure they don't find us? You mean, like, be friends in secret? We'll even pretend we're not friends at school. Then we can meet here and play. You know what? I think that's the best place. Plan ever. Rendezvous back here tomorrow at 1600 hours? Synchronizing now. Hello, 
person. Why, you're practically a stranger to me. La, 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 la. <laughs> Quick, Gus. What time is it in Sydney, Australia? 8.15. Tomorrow morning! <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Gus, what's up? We haven't seen you after school lately. Are you secretly taking violin lessons? You're practicing enough to beat me at something, aren't you? No, it's nothing like that. In fact, it's nothing at all. Uh, I've got to go and do something. Uh, Excuse me, I didn't see... Ah! You! I mean, I did not see you because you were not there to me. I am ignoring you. I do not recognize your presence here. Yeah, me too. In fact, I can't ever hear what you just said. Goodbye, uh, nobody. That was odd. Yep, you don't see too much of that. Hey there, Chippy. How about that run in at the cafeteria? Boy, that was a close one. But we both ignored each other really good. That's for sure. They don't suspect a thing. <gasps> oh no, it's your friends. Quick, hide. Sat, I knew the setup wouldn't last. The ice cream is too good and the service is too friendly. What are we going to do? We need a new secret place to meet. I got it. Okay, you're not going to go. Now run. I'll meet you there later. Gus? What are you doing down there? Nothing unusual. Bye! What the Samuel P. Froop was that? One would surmise from Gus's strange behavior around Courtship Girl, coupled with her having actually witnessed him talking to Courtship Girl and running out after her, that he and Courtship Girl are hanging out. If their dads catch him, they'll get into more trouble than ever. Hence the secrecy. Oh, what a star-crossed friendship there is. I say it's time we get those two dads together for a little talk. We're not dealing with kids here, Teach. There's no way we're going to get two big, mad, suspicious military guys to come to the same place at the same time. Suspicious military guys, eh? Vince, buddy, that gives me an idea. Everything seems operational, TJ. But to be honest, I haven't even switched on my Sinisterizer voice modulation device since the State Science Expo. Crank her up, Gretch. We gotta try. Spinelli, get Lieutenant Griswold on the blower. Lieutenant Griswold here. This is who? This is Boris Sputnik. Now yeah, listen, listen very carefully. carefully. I spy for the enemy. I have something of utmost what national importantness to discuss with you. You want me to meet you? Right away, in park near 3rd Street School. Do not be fooled by my shortness. I really am spy. I'll be there, Boris. I'll be there, Sputnik. Tender. Griswold, surrender your position. I'm here on a matter of national security. You surrender your position. I was here first. Gentlemen, gentlemen, please. How about we forget our differences for a sec and have a guy-to-guy -guy talk? Good great, Neptune. Who are they sending to spy on us? I'm not a spy, sir. I'm Gus's pal, T.J. Detweiler. Your boy's friend, eh? No doubt your son had a part in this little prank. No doubt your daughter talked him into it. Guys, guys, please listen. The reason I brought you here... <laughs> uh, that's my daughter's chortle. Well, that's my son's guffaw. Over there! Teach, what's going on? I don't know for sure, but I got a pretty good feeling it's trouble. Why is everyone afraid of me? I don't know. You look nice to me. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa Laverne LeMay, Gustav Patton Griswold. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Ahoy, Dad. Guys, what are you doing here? First-rate idea bringing us here, son. Good snoop work, but we'll take over now. Uh, oops. Teresa, shove off from that boy. Permission to speak, sir. Permission granted. Sir, my answer to your request is no. I'm staying with my friend Gus. What? Well, Amaze, it looks like all that time at sea has left you with a soft little sailor who can't follow orders. Unlike my boy, who knows his place. Son, roll out from the girl front and center. No, sir. I'm afraid that's an order I cannot in good conscience execute. You, you're disobeying me? Yes, Dad, sir. You've always taught me to fight for what was right. And being friends is a lot more right than being enemies. Whatever you dads have going on between you is your guys' problem. And it's not right to make it us guys' problem, too. But, 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 Sirs, I respectfully request that you work stuff out or sign a treaty or something. Because with Cornship Girl and me being friends, you'll be seeing a whole lot more of each other. Well, I suppose your daughter did show a good deal of courage by standing up for her new, uh, friend. Man, your youngsters got a lot of spunk. Perhaps we should draw up plans for a cross-forces play date. Affirmative. Wow, Gus. That was quite a speech. Yeah, it looks like they're gonna let you hang out with Cornship Girl whenever you want. Well, maybe not exactly. I insist we have the first play date on my territory. Negative! I insist that the initial play date occurred on my coordinates. But at least it's a start. No, you listen to me. You gonna back that up, huh? You and what army? You 